Hey everyone, welcome to Marketing by John. Today we're going to be talking about how you should embrace the change if your goal is growth in 2021 and beyond. It is literally, literally the only thing you can do if you want to grow. Now, the smart business leaders out there already know this. And if you're not quite there yet, you will really fast understand that embracing change is the best possible business strategy for growth. If you haven't experienced, I mean, actually, I can't even say that because anybody in the, in the remote vicinity of a leadership position just experienced this in 2020. Uh, so here we are, early 2021. And if you were, like I said, remotely sniffing a leadership position, you just went through a forced change. So I retract my previous statement. You now all know how important change is because it's the only way to survive. This wasn't even the case just because of COVID. I mean, this was the case before. Embracing change as a leader was the best way to basically sniff out the things that weren't efficient, weren't effective, and were not remarkable, and going all in on the things that were, or the things that could be, or will be in the next five years. But COVID has now exposed us all to realizing this. So let's look at the concrete examples of how almost all industries have been leapt. It's like we leapt we leapfrogged 10 years, a whole full decade. We basically bounced over it in one year. So 2020 was like 10 years of change smashed into one year. Number one, business travel. So COVID and the pandemic required us all to stop traveling for business. So what did that do to the business travel industry? Crushed it. I can't remember the numbers, but I want to say it was like $1.4 billion spent on business travel alone in 2019. Somebody go Google that and prove me wrong. But so business travel, that went down. You know what went up? Video conferencing. So video conferencing has been around forever. Skype, I mean, that's been around for more than a decade. But you look at Zoom and Google Hangouts and Uber Conference, I don't know, and all the other ones out there. They've absolutely crushed it because people had no choice, okay? That would have happened over a decade. Maybe, uh, maybe more actually, maybe a couple of decades for people to really realize that I don't need to spend, you know, $10,000 for my entire team to travel over to Asia to meet with our manufacturers for, you know, two hours, stay the night in a hotel and then fly back. Instead, we can do a video conference uh, with a, with a translator and, uh, s you know, skip a lot of that and probably save about $9,555 or whatever. So you know, that would have taken some time. Video chatting, that would have taken, it's still, people are still getting Zoom fatigue and, and still not loving it. So I don't know how long it would have taken for businesses to adopt video chatting really to the extent that we had to. I don't know that it ever would have happened. I don't want to say never, but who knows? Anyways, the, that's how an example of how we've, you know, skipped forward 10 years in a year in that respect. Look at, on the consumer side, curbside service, at-home delivery, uh, and the, basically the convenience factor of getting whatever we want as quick as we want it without actually spending time on the thing. A uh, great example is a store, which I hope all of you know and have experienced, Wegmans. Come on, if you don't know Wegmans, if you've never been into Wegmans, you're missing out on one of the best grocery shopping experiences of your life. Uh, even if you don't go into the store because of pan the pandemic, you know, the food and the actual groceries that you can get are, it's just, I don't even know how to compare it. You'll just have to go talk to somebody who's been to a Wegmans. But <clears throat> when the pandemic hit, they rapidly adjusted to be able to serve its customers. And I don't know how they did financially, but I know from an experience standpoint, as an avid customer that goes probably twice a week, they crushed it. So as soon as you couldn't go to a store anymore, they, they went all in on Instacart and curbside delivery. So you could order your groceries through their app. You could order groceries through, through, or, you know, through Instacart or Instacart would deliver them to you, uh, or you could go pick them up yourself. As soon as they, it started to open up a little bit more, they did takeout meals. You could get your dinners packaged, uh, and go and, and pick them up because they couldn't do their, their eatery buffet service anymore. Um, and so they just, they pivoted so fast. They embraced the change better than almost any other company, you know, larger, medium-sized, large company that I've, I've seen. Uh, another local sort of smaller example is of a good friend who owns a few restaurants, great brands, great restaurant concepts. 
And when the restaurant industry took a huge hit, he also went all in on Grubhub, went all in on marketing, went all in on, hey, you know, don't forget you can pick your food up here. We got specials. We got things, you know, that are delivery only and special only, pickup only. Uh, and, And they did well, you know, hard to navigate. The experience of going out and eating is something that we all yearn to come back. But but that quick pivot allowed him to survive and thrive through the through, through the pandemic. This is equally so. Here I'm talking about businesses, but this is equally as as prevalent in the marketing space. So what happened in marketing? So in marketing, we're all about communicating messages, right? So because we went out less, digital became the no-brainer for everybody. It already was for all consumer brands, but for any B2B manufacturing, LinkedIn, YouTube, that all became much more of a game changer uh, and a playing field that wasn't previously there. Email, outreach, um, digital communication, uh, virtual pitch decks, virtual showrooms. Um, not sure if you've heard of Matterport, but this is what they do. They stitch together pictures so you can have like a virtual showroom, um, digital catalogs. All of this stuff happened in the course of a year when some of these companies wouldn't even have been thinking about it for another decade. So in the marketing space, not only did we see sort of the B2B manufacturing side of things jump forward, we saw consumers start to consume way more than they did before. TikTok blew up. YouTube blew up. OTT blew up. Netflix consumption blew up. The expansion of other OTT companies. IMDB TV came out and and put out what I can see as one of the first ad-supported OTT platforms out there. So over-the-top OTT. Uh, And so like Pandora and Spotify did with their freemium model, you could, you could download those apps for free and listen to music, but there would be ads in it. Netflix didn't do this. Amazon Video didn't do this. HBO didn't do this. Um, IMDb did. They have original content, good movies and series on IMDb TV, the app. Go download it on your Amazon Fire Stick or Apple TV or whatever. But they have ads, like commercials. And when I, I mean, the shows are awesome. Um, so they adopted very fast. I have no idea if they were planning this before 2020, but but as far as I can see, they launched it in 2020, or at least really grew it. So consumers' consumption of media skyrocketed. Because we would have been having experiences, because we would have been going out and doing things and taking vacations if COVID never hit, this would have taken much more time for these platforms to develop this way. Um you know, Spotify, buy, paying Joe Rogan $100 million during a pandemic to sign him just shows you the amount of content that consumers were consuming during the pandemic. So all industries have leapt forward a decade, generally. The ones that succeeded during 2020 were the ones that adopted to, uh, adapted to the change or, or changed. They were not the ones waiting for 2019 to come back, waiting for the pandemic to end. They were the ones saying, you know what, this is how things are. Let's dive in. So the ones that dove into TikTok were successful. The ones that are diving into an app called Clubhouse now, they're the ones that are successful. The ones that went all in on YouTube long form content as a brand, they're the ones that are successful. So my point is text messaging. Go all in on text messaging. You'll be successful. So My point is, embrace the change. Do not pout. Do not look back to 2019. Move forward. Great quote by Wayne Gretzky. Skate to where the puck is going to be. That's what you need to do right now to be successful. All right, everyone, if you found this podcast uh, successful, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure you like it, share it with a friend, and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on YouTube if you like watching this. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform if you'd rather listen to it, but that way you won't miss any of my future shows about the most important things in marketing that you need to know. We'll see you next time. (laughs) 